We're at the Newport Ritchie Recreation and Aquatic Center. This is The Breakdown, where Eric, Zach, and Matt dive into different exercises and workout concepts to help you reach your fitness goals. This week on The Breakdown, Back Squad. Everyone should do squats because it's a primitive movement. Everyone gets up and sits down, so it's important to strengthen the muscles you use while doing those movements. You should do back squats because it helps build muscle, and muscle is going to keep you healthier and functioning better for the long term. Back squats work your glutes, your legs, as well as your core. When you're squatting, you're building your muscles, which in turn helps strengthen your tendons, which is good for your knees, your ankles, and your hips. It's important for everyone to be strong in the end range of motion in your joints. All right, for the back squat, we wanna set the bar up on the rack just below our shoulders. From there, we wanna make sure our hands are even on the bar. You can use the knurling to help you do so. You're gonna pull yourself underneath the bar, putting the bar on the top of your shoulders, squeezing your shoulder blades together. When you're about to pick it up, you're gonna have your feet right underneath you and you're gonna pick it up similar to a squat. Once you do that, you're going to take a step or two back. You don't want to walk back too far. So it's a step or two back. And then you're going to put your feet into your squat position, which is going to be somewhere around your shoulder width. We're going to have our toes pointing outward slightly. From there, we're going to want to brace our spine. We can do this by squeezing our glutes, tightening our abs, and keeping our rib cage low. From there, that makes sure we're locked in and ready to go, and our spine is protected from our, by our muscles. We're gonna send our hips backwards slightly as we lower. Our knees are gonna track over our toes. And we're gonna to try to get as low as we can while maintaining a straight back. Our goal is to get our hips below our knees, so below parallel. But again, it's most important that our back stays nice and straight. The whole time I'm thinking about keeping my chest nice and tall. As I stand up, I'm pressing through my feet with even pressure. As I stand up, I'm letting out a little bit of air. And then from there, I'm gonna rack the bar by walking all the way forward until I hear and see the rack or the bar hit both sides of the rack. And then you can lower and walk out. There's two main types of back squats. One is the high bar back squat and then the low bar back squat. Both are very similar, but have slight differences to them. So for the high bar back squat, we're gonna set that more on top of our shoulders on our trap above the bone on our shoulders. From here, we're gonna be in a more upright position. This is gonna put the weight and the load more on our quads. This type of squat is commonly used by Olympic weightlifters because they have to stay more upright in their lifts for their sport. For the low bar back squat, the bar goes a little bit lower on the back of our shoulders. For this movement, we send our hips back a little bit further and our knees don't go as far over our toes. This puts more of the weight into our hips and into our glutes and hamstrings. We're gonna be bent over just a little bit more than we would be with the high bar back squat. The low bar back squat is commonly used by power lifters and used to lift the most weight possible. For me personally, I like the high bar back squat. I believe it transfers over to everyday life a little bit better. It is okay to wear a lifting belt during the back squat. However, the belt doesn't take any pressure off of your lower back. It just helps you brace your core. So if you're slightly out of position, the belt isn't necessarily gonna protect your back from hurting. It is best to practice back squats without a belt so you can build a strong core. I recommend not wearing a belt until you're above 90% of your one rep max. A common misconception about back squats is that it's bad for your knees. This isn't true as long as you're using the proper technique that Aaron went over. Your knees, hips, and ankles are all meant to go through full range of motion, and back squats are a great way to build strength in your muscles and your joints. A common flaw when doing back squats is knee vulgus. This is when your knees go inward, commonly on the way back up. Over time, this could cause excess strain on your knees. To avoid this, try building strength in your glutes and hips with exercises like side-lying leg lifts, lateral walks, and the abductor machine. So the first step to having a good back squat is to make sure that you have a good air squat first. If your air squat's not good, we don't want to add weight to that. 
So again, just kind of working on strengthening your glutes to make sure your knees aren't coming in like Matt was talking about. Once you kind of have a good air squat, then you can move over to the back squat and start adding more weight. So like Zach said earlier in the video, it's important to go to a full range of motion of your joints. Now, if you're struggling with that, you can do box squats will kind of help limit your range to help you build strength over time and you can slowly lower and lower that mark. With the back squat, you can also focus on the negative portion. So the way that you're sitting down, maybe going at a three second tempo. This is gonna put more time under tension on your tendons and it's gonna help build more strength and help you get more comfortable in the movement as well. Some other variations of squats that you can do with weight is a front squat, you can do a goblet squat, and you can also use dumbbells as well. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Aaron, this is Zach and Matt. If you have any other exercises or workout concepts you want us to do, let us know. See you guys on the next one.